Good day. My name is David Wilde, and this is the third part of a five-part lecture on Chapter 16 on Human Resource Management from Connect Master Management 2.0. In this section of the lecture, we're going to talk about the subject of employee training and development. After employees are hired, an important step in the process of providing employees with the knowledge, skills, and abilities necessary for their current and even their future job is talent development, which includes orientation, training, and development. Orientation, or what many companies refer to today as onboarding, involves integrating a new hire into the organization as well as integrating them into their role within the organization. Onboarding involves providing the new hire, whether he or she be external or internal, with the skills, the resources, and the connections to do their job effectively. An onboarding program should include both company-level information, in other words, information about the culture, and perhaps the politics of power and decision-making in the company, and departmental-level information, such as information about the job, the products and services, the customers, and the technologies involved. Onboarding should also foster the building of connections to their team and key stakeholders who are important for talent development and success within the organization. Training programs focus on providing employees with the knowledge, skills, and abilities for their current job. Although there are a number of training design models, Figure 3, taken from the text and shown on your screen, highlights the steps common among most models for creating an effective training process, which includes first doing a needs assessment, then doing instructional design, then actually delivering the training, and then finally evaluating the effectiveness of such training. We'll talk about each of these four steps here. The first step for effective training is to do a needs assessment. The primary goal of a needs assessment is to identify gaps in what current employees are doing and what they should be doing in their current jobs. Understanding this requires knowledge of the organization's goals. A task analysis focuses on evaluating the level of discrepancy between what KSA's employees possess relevant to the organization's goals and those that are needed to realize those goals. The task analysis is a key part of identifying what should be included in the content of training programs. The last part of the needs assessment is to identify which individuals require training. Everyone has different knowledge, skills, abilities, and experiences, and it is likely that some individuals are in more need of training than others. Given the cost of training programs, it is a good idea to limit training to those who truly need it. Instructional design. The second step to consider in the training process is the actual design of the training program. In particular, HR professionals need to make sure that training supports the goals of the organization. A key component of training design is to be clear on the instructional objectives, the statements that describe what is to be accomplished in the training program. Understanding the desired outcome will impact the content of the training, but it will also impact how that training is carried out. Next, we have the subject of training delivery. The next step in effective training is to consider the delivery of the training programs. At a broad level, training can be delivered on the job or off the job. On-the-job training programs happen when an employee is actively working for the organization. They are learning as they perform the task associated with their jobs. Some of the more common on-the-job training programs are apprenticeships, 
and internships. Apprenticeships have a long history in the skilled trades, such as carpentry or plumbing, which require extended periods of hands-on learning before mastering the required skills. Internships are familiar to many students and involve students working in an organization for a specified period of time to learn what the job and a possible career in the industry would be like. Some of the more common off-the-job training approaches include classroom training, e-learning, simulations, university programs, coaching, and mentoring. Training evaluation. Training is a costly but potentially very valuable activity that organizations engage in to bolster the skills of their workforce. Realizing that potential requires training programs to be evaluated to determine their level of success. Based on the pioneering work of Dr. Don Kirkpatrick in the 1950s, there are four primary levels of training evaluation. Level one reactions are, how do participants feel about the program? Do they believe they learned? Are they satisfied with the training program? Level two learning involves, does the trainee know more about the training than before? Level three behavior involves, do the trainees display different skills and abilities? And do they perform better as a response to the training? Level four is results. Does the training lead to improvements in business activities and processes? And are the training outcomes worth the investment? Now, let's address employee development. While training programs focus on em providing employees with the knowledge, skills, and abilities for their current job, development programs take a longer perspective and focus on building the abilities employees will need later in their organizational career. There are several approaches to employee development, some of which overlap with off-the-job training approaches, but with a longer time horizon. These include formal education programs, participation in courses either in-house or at colleges and universities to provide employees with general skills such as leadership development, coaching, longer-term one-on-one development with an individual to help improve job performance through providing feedback, creating connections to key stakeholders, and providing resources such as courses or, or job experiences in order for them to develop. Mentoring. This means pairing senior employees with junior employees to teach the junior employees how the organization works and helping them navigate their career within the organization. Assessments using assessments to provide information to employees, such as personality type, communication style, skills to identify strengths to be developed, and weaknesses to be improved. And finally, job experiences, using stretch job assignments to challenge employees to develop new skills through actual experiences. So, in summary on employee training and development, Managing the abilities of the workforce focuses on staffing and training programs. Training and development programs are implemented to help employees continue to develop their skills or to develop new skills that will help the organization achieve competitive success. Typically, four steps are involved in an effective training process. First, performing a needs assessment. Second, designing the training program to be delivered. Third, providing the actual training. And fourth, evaluating the effectiveness of the training. Performing a needs assessment will help identify gaps in what current employees are doing and what they should be doing in their jobs. When designing a training program, HR professionals should make sure that training supports organizational goals and that the program includes clear and precise objectives that describe what should be accomplished in the training program. How training is delivered is an important component of any training program. 
Training can be delivered on the job, via, apprentice, via apprenticeships and internships, or off the job via approaches such as classroom learning, e-learning, simulations, university programs, coaching, and mentoring. The final step in the training process is to evaluate the effectiveness of the actual programs, which can be analyzed according to four different levels of training compliance. Employee development programs take a longer view than training programs, focusing on building the abilities of employees that they will need later in their organizational careers. Some of the approaches to employee development include formal education programs, coaching, mentoring, assessments that provide personal information to employees about their personality type, communication style, and skills to help identify strengths to be developed and weaknesses to be improved. And with that, we'll end this part of the lecture on Chapter 16 on Human Resource Management.